Hey everybody. So today I'm going to show you how I put together a homeschool portfolio that I use for a end of the year assessment. Okay. So I live in a state where you can either submit uh, test scores, standardized test scores for your homeschool child at the end of the year, or you can submit a portfolio that a certified teacher looks at, discusses with you, signs off, and you submit that form saying that your portfolio has been assessed by a certified teacher. So even if my children do standardized testing, like we've done the CAT test, the California Achievement Test, even if my kids do that, I usually still put together a portfolio because I really enjoy having a conversation with a teacher and get feedback on different ways to uh, improve and, and, and get different ideas on what we can do and what we should do, what, I was, what we're missing, uh, options for the next year for grades and stuff like that. Um, so that's that. So I've been homeschooling about 10 years. Uh, my children have only been homeschooled. They've never been in any school setting at all. Currently, I have, I have three boys, and they're currently in the ninth grade, the seventh grade, and fifth grade. So they are age-wise, they're 15, just about 13, and almost 11. So we're on an odd year this year um, for us. So um, I have a bit of experience putting together portfolios each year. And I do them sometimes differently each year. So I'm going to just show you the basics for how I pull together a portfolio that I will show a teacher. So first thing I do is during, like right around now, so it's January, it's the end of January now, um, I usually try really hard to start my portfolio. And that's so that I do not get overwhelmed come May or June, okay? So, and I like to do my portfolio in two ways. I like to make a photo album as well as grab a binder with samples of their work. Okay, so I'll start with photo albums. So I have a whole, I mean, I just pulled out of my cabinet, like I have all these photo albums, right? For what we do. And I just use, I don't even know if it says on the back, either Shutterfly or, um, oh shoot, I can't think of the other names of them. I mind is kind of going blank on other names of companies that do this but like like shutterfly for example and i just make a book so i usually put on the cover picture the kids say the year that it is they were homeschooling um i put the great next page I, I usually this is how i usually do every single one of them i'll put the academic year and the grades that they're in this happens to be when charles was in the seventh so this is when i had seventh fifth and third grader um then what I do, and I like the way I did it better on this one this year. The next page, what I'll do is I will write out curricula that we used or achievements that we've had. So on this one, this year, I just wrote out basic curricula that we used. Okay, we had math. We used Saxon 7, 6, intermediate 5, intermediate 3, down to the next, whatever the next one is. Language arts. We used Grand Fix It. We used the Institute of Excellence of Writing. And I just write down, boom, what our sources were for curricula. Now, sometimes, and I usually do this, that, that one's kind of an anomaly here. Uh, you, I know you can't read this, but I want to give you an idea of like the size that I would write for each child or each subject. So I would start it with, I started with mathematics and I write a paragraph about my oldest son and his what he did in math and then my middle son and what he did in math and my youngest son and what he did in math and i word it like you know like this was primary resource was right start math level e then we switched to teaching textbooks four um he started on this level but we found that the program wasn't working well for him so we switched anyway um and, and so i'll write and we did it began with a solid review of addition subtraction it's just a basic synopsis of what um he learned with that curriculum and then i moved on you know, to language arts, the oldest, the middle, the youngest, and I just go on through all the required subjects in my state. And so this is more of a um, conversational style, how things were going, so that if the teacher was unable to sit directly next to me, which she always does, um, she could open this up right away and get a, a conversational style of what it is that, that we did. 
And again, like I said, the last year, or the, this other year, I just did it quick. Oh, you can tell this year was a rush year. But I still listed the curriculum we used so that I have it. Then on the photo books, I really try to just concentrate on different things that we did that you can't capture on a worksheet, right? Different things. A lot of them are science, going to a science center, um, history museums, you know, museums that we've gone to, kind of hands-on learning. Um, uh, one of my son did tap and hip hop and soccer, so athletics and extracurricular activities and things like that. All things that you really can't get a sense of on a piece of paper, written, written work. Okay, so that's how I do my photo album. Sometimes, oh yeah, like if they're involved in any any other um, after school activities, science experiments that are kind of hard to show, especially the younger levels. At an older level in high school, you can give a lab report. But at the younger levels, it's kind of nice just to have more of a photo reference of what it is that you do. So that's how I did it. Now, one year, like I said, I make these things different every year. So there's no right or wrong way to put together your portfolio or your photo album. I'm just sharing with you different ways that I've done it. One year I did it by um, subject that's required in my state. So I did a page on library skills. I did a page on health and physical education. Um, I did a page on fine arts or spread on fine arts. Um, a spread on science. You know, I made some eyeballs uh, that really wouldn't fit in a portfolio to show. Um, social studies, different field trips. So there's different ways that you can break down your photo album, right? One, you can just throw together pictures like this year. I was like, oh, I'm just going to throw together pictures of things that I can't, you know, or you can do it more succinct, like by subject or by uh, topic or something. So I do that so that the teacher gets a sense of who we are and what we do and what their learning looks like. Okay. Then on to the binders. So I've done these in a couple of different ways also. So the binders have samples of their work that they have done throughout the year. And so like I was saying, starting around now is a good time to start pulling out samples of work that your child has done in the first semester, if you wanna you know, break your school year up into semesters, um, so that you're not overwhelmed at the end of the year. So what I do is, in all honesty, I actually I'll tell you two different ways I've organized it. One year, I organized it by child. So I started with, oh, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Hold on. I started with my oldest and I put in samples of their work. Okay, started with my oldest and then went on to the middle child, then went on to the youngest child. Another year, I did it by subject. So I organized this and I did everybody's examples of, well, let me open this because there's some extra stuff I'll talk to you about in a minute. Hold on. Examples of everybody's math. So first my oldest kid's math, some examples, and then my, whoops, that one's taken out, and then my middle kid's math, and then we moved to language arts, and we moved to um, history, and so it was grouped by subject. So you can organize a portfolio binder by your child and do everything for that one child or by subject. This is what all three of them did at this subject. This is what all three of them did in this subject. Totally up to you. Or if you know who your teacher is, who's going to be reviewing, you can ask them and say, how, how do you prefer um, I show this to you? You know, I've done it both ways and the teacher that I use hasn't said either way that she has a preference. Um, last time, for the last school year, we had to do it via Zoom, and she did want to go one child by one child. So I think this year I'll do it like that, too, for her. So what do I even put in these? So you can organize them by subject or by child. But what goes in here? So what goes in here? Samples of their work. And so for us, um, I don't want to use this one as an example because we did a lot of computer stuff that year. I'll grab this one. So for us... Yeah, it's a matter of showing, I do what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight-ish um, samples. I try to do 
beginning of the school year, so let's say September, I try to break them in quarters, two, two examples from each quarter. Roughly, it's kind of what this, this ends up by being, since I just counted out eight, we have four quarters. That's usually what I end up by doing. So I'll pick uh, two Octobers, two November, two Octobers, two Decembers, two um, Marches, two Mays, samples of their work. And I will literally take out their, now my kids do their math on, they like doing on colored squared sheets, Saxon. Um, so I will just take their sheet because it's done on paper and I will just put it in a sleeve a plastic sleeve and tuck it in my portfolio binder, close it up and we're ready to go. So I try to do two samples, two examples um, per quarter per subject. And that seems to be enough to show progress of what the kids have learned. Okay, so um, what else? Let's see. But sometimes, and I don't have one here. Oh yeah, sometimes it's just a matter of taking a story that they wrote uh, that I really liked. And here, this is one of my kids' stories. And just putting it right in there. You know, just grabbing a story, putting it in there. That's a pretty good example of his handwriting and of his grammar and of his thought processes to put together paragraphs and all that stuff. But sometimes, and like I say, don't have a good example of it in this um, year's work because a lot of the stuff we had we were able to write right on the worksheet. If, and they were like separate papers, if you have a bound workbook, actually I have, hold on, I got this, it's not, we're not using this right now, but um, like if you have a bound book, and I actually just got this because we're gonna start using it soon. Like this is the story of the world, um, volume two, Middle Ages, tests, now, as we start doing the tests, they're in this book. I could rip out the page and put it in my portfolio. Or what I usually do is I will photocopy it. I'll photocopy it or scan and print it. So that goes into my portfolio. So I'm not messing up this full finished nice book, but the samples are still put in the portfolio. So that's basically, in a nutshell, how I pull together um, a portfolio of samples. I literally just take a look at what they're doing and I just grab some sheets and, you know, this one was a chapter test. Um, you know, just, you know, just a chapter test for, I, I made, I created it for a book we read the great, by the Great Horn Spoon. I created the test for them. So I just printed it and put it in as a sample. So, Sometimes things that don't fit well would be like artwork. So occasionally I'll have an extra folder that I'll bring with me that'll show, you know, artwork that the kids have done. Um, sometimes the artwork fits right in here. I think someone made a one year here. I'll show you this, you know, like a, what do you call this? Like a schematic drawing that fit right in the portfolio. Nice and easy. Now, if I wanted to keep this with all of his artwork, again, I could scan it print it and then put in a copy in here. So one thing not to forget when you are doing a portfolio is don't forget all the things that your kids have done, right? Like, did they win any awards? Like my, one of my kids won something. I forget what it was. It was a, <laughs> yeah, well, a knot tying in his, um, a troop activity he had done. Anyway, and my kids one year, um, were one of their, um, films that they make. My kids have a YouTube channel. It's the Sideshow Bros, if you want to check them out. But they had made a movie and they submitted it and they were entered into a film festival and their little short movie was shown at a film festival. We got a certificate, so I put that in here. I put in also things, yeah, certificates, awards. Sometimes at the end of, like, recreational soccer, they'll give you a little certificate saying you completed it. I put that in there. Swimming, Red Cross uh, swim lessons, you know, they give you the, the, the sheet that tells you what level you're at. I'll throw that in the portfolio as well. Sometimes what I'll also do, just as more from my memories, not so much for the teacher, uh, but from my memories, is on the first day of school, and I don't think I did it this year. Um, I don't think I did. On the first day of school, and on the last day, I asked them some questions. 
and I'll write that down. So I'll say, I'll write down, so this one is like first day of seventh grade. He was 12 years old. He was five foot. Well, I'll tell you his weight. I write his height and weight. <coughs> I asked him what his favorite movie was, Jurassic World. His favorite book, The Count of Monte Cristo. Favorite TV show, Parks and Rec. Favorite thing to do, going outside. When I grow up, I want to be. And then I ask at the end of the year, the last day of school. Wow, he grew two inches and like 17 pounds. Um, favorite movie changed, you know, favorite book changed, you know, was favorite movie went to Unbreakable, his favorite book was Prey by Michael Crichton, favorite TV show Psych, favorite thing to do woodworking. And it's kind of nice for me to see a snapshot as to how they've grown, um, I don't know, just asking simple questions. So that is, in a nutshell, how I pull together my uh, portfolio that I will present to a teacher for an assessment. For homeschooling and again this year I have a ninth grade seventh and fifth grade I will be putting together a photo album again of things that you just can't capture on paper I'll have a written out part that shows all the different curriculum that we've done now I put this in the photo album as well as a copy of it in the portfolio thing so I'll write what we I'll just write math what we did all the way down, all the different subjects we've done, and then extracurriculars also. So don't forget to add in those extracurriculars. Kids do other stuff than just the required subjects. And it's nice, um, even if you don't have to, or you're required to show a teacher, it's nice as a memory to just look back, like, oh yeah, I forgot they did this. So I'm, I'm actually, when I dug out some of this, I was like, oh, I forgot they did this. Oh, I forgot they did that. And I kind of really enjoyed going through my photo album. So, and again, you can organize them any way you want. You can organize them through subject by subject. You can organize them by child. It depends if you have more than one child, you can do that. If you just have one, you can organize it obviously by subject, it'll probably be best. Um, or you can even do a separate binder for each child, a separate album for each child. I just do it all together because it's just easier for me to navigate three kids like that. So I hope this helps. Um, and if I do have my kids take a uh, standard, um, what do you call those? A test, a standardized testing, then I also will include those results in the portfolio book too. It's kind of like a good record of what we've done for the year. As we hit, since we're hitting ninth grade, my first year of high school, I'm approaching things a little bit differently. So I'll try to make a video, I'll make another video. Yeah, on how I'm doing record keeping for ninth grade. I don't know if I'm doing it right. Okay, like, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm learning. It's my first kid uh, in high school. But anyway, I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions for me, uh, put them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can on any anything here that I've done. Or if you have questions about homeschooling in general, I do my best to answer or, or create a video to help answer any sort of questions that you have. Um, and I hope this is helpful. So please remember, like, share, subscribe, and... Um, Good luck on your homeschooling journey.